There are benefits to converting your incandescent Christmas village to 12 volt DC LED illumination. In my case, I can return my lighthouse to flashing lighthouse. You can add color if you want. You can get rid of this and go to that. You also get access to Wi-Fi controllers, dimmers, phone and smart home control. And if you wanted to, you could add individual control of each fixture in your presentation. I will show you how to easily convert your village to 12 volt DC. At the end, for more advanced users, I will show you how to convert those pesky battery operated accessories to run off 12 volt DC as well, keeping with the theme of everything running off 12 volt DC. For this conversion, you'll need some LED strip lights. I'm using warm white, while there are many more LED types than I show here. Try to use one that has a 10 millimeter or 8 millimeter wide string so that there's accessories available to avoid soldering. You'll also need a 12 volt LED power supply. If you don't have a power supply or the lights, you may just want to order a kit, which will give you the power supply, the lights, and probably a dimmer at a reasonable price. We'll need barrel connectors. These are commonly used in LED and CCD TVs. You will need some 20 or 22 gauge wire. You can purchase it in white online. It comes in lengths about 65 feet, which would be more than enough for your project. There are two types of leads to consider. One is a barrel connector with a quick connect to connect to your LED strip on the other end. The other one is called an LED strip extension or sometimes a jumper connection. These need to be ordered uh, with the 10 millimeter or 8 millimeter connector on the end that you need. So make sure you know what size you need. You may want to purchase a Y cable to split your power, but I'm going to show you how to make those using the barrel connectors you buy and possibly some terminal block. So just remember in DC power, it's positive red to positive red and negative black to negative black. The two should never cross. So let's make some lights. I've been through a couple of versions of this, so we're going to do the easy version. For the average fixture, we're going to use two sections of LED stripping. So if you look at your LED strip, you can cut the lights every three lights. The reason is it takes three lights to consume the equivalent of 12 volts at 12 volts. So we're going to cut off essentially six lights as one section. Now the first thing I want you to note is that the extension at one end, the wire is going to connect with the red on the left, and on the other end, it's going to connect with the red on the right. All that means is you flip around your LED strip and align it with whichever end you're using. So we're going to cut that in half. Actually, we're going to cut it a little shorter than half. We want it fairly short so when it sticks into the house, it doesn't hit anything. Make sure you leave it long enough so you can strip the wires and comfortably get it into the barrel connector. Strip the wires off in about 3 sixteenths of an inch and stick it in the barrel connector. The red goes in the positive and the black goes in the negative. Make sure you loosen up those screws and the, those connectors will go right in. Next, we're going to put in your piece of LED strip lighting. So align the positive with the red and the black with the negative. The strip faces up. So uh, to open the door, there's a little latch on the side that takes a fingernail or something small and you kind of pry it up and it should just pop right open. Now, when you stick your strip in, you want to try not to bend it because bending it can crack the copper that makes up the strip. So what I recommend is get it up to the pins and just lightly wobble it side to side and normally they just go right in. If it works, the next thing we're going to do is take the strip, bend it over, and take a piece of electrical tape, and just tape it to the socket. And make sure you don't cover that last LED bulb. And when you're done, you're going to have a loop. Don't worry about the adhesive on the back. You can leave it covered, not covered. I'd probably leave it covered so it doesn't stick to everything random. And uh, you'll be all set. And then when you're done, you should have a lit loop. Lit loop. There is an alternate to doing the loop. You could either just leave the piece of LED dangling, or you could uh, tape a piece of metal onto the lead and then hot glue the LED onto the piece of metal so that you can bend it and shape it a little bit. Just remember if you bend the LED that it can pull it out of the socket so you do have to leave a bit of a service loop there if you're going to bend it too far. So I used to cut a circle out of foam and then stick the connector through the foam and then I realized all I need to do is cut a strip of buffalo snow, wrap it around until it gets about the diameter of the hole and stick it in the fixture. You want to make sure that whatever you use to hold your lights in the fixture does not create enough pressure on your fixture to break it and this works just fine. LEDs don't get too hot, so this shouldn't be a problem at all. Now I did evaluate what it would take to use the metal springs that came on the original lights. They actually hold that light together and they're also pushed on one way, so getting them off would be really hard and there seemed to be no benefit to it. Now the other way you can make your light is you could use a barrel, a pre-made barrel connector with a clip that goes on your LEDs. They're a little bit longer, they're about five inches longer. Now I use one on the church because in the case of the church, I use uh, not two pieces of light, I use three pieces of light because it's a larger fixture. I also use the longer one so I can extend the light further into the middle of the church, which kind of gives it a better even distribution versus putting it at the end. 
So for my lighthouse, I made this wood uh, core that goes in it so I could extend the light all the way up into the top and the bottom. And I put on these metal plates and put the LEDs on there and wired it up. In fact, I could have easily done this with just two pieces of uh, barrel connector wire, staging one higher than the other. So it went into the top and one on the bottom. If you notice on my lighthouse, I use a different color light. I use a cool white in the top and I use warm white on the bottom. So when the light flashes, it looks distinctive from the rest of the presentation, which has that nice warm glow to it. The location of my village installation is new this year, so we're going to go through how I lay it out and connect everything. Previously, I tried to keep it away from the cats by putting it in the shelves or on top of high item. This year, we're going to put it in the location for the best presentation and see if it survives. I like to give my village some differences in elevation, so I'm going to put the castle on some books and I'm going to put the church up on some books. After putting down the snow, I laid out the village the way I thought it looked best. Then, where each light enters the fixture, I put a small piece of blue painter's tape on the snow to mark that location. And then I did the same thing for the street lights and the accessories. We're going to be daisy chaining all of our village houses together. To do that, we're going to run a wire across the entire length of the village. Starting at the end furthest from your roll of wire, you want to cut a little hole where you want the wire to come through for the fixture. And at that location, you're going to pull the wire through and leave a little loop maybe about four inches. And then go down to the next one, cut a little hole, pull some wire through. Now I leave a, little, a good service loop underneath, so when you make that loop, feel free to make a nice arc going to the next fixture so you have some slack there to pull up if you need it. And then continue down the entire row until you've taken all of your fixture locations and pulled out a loop. Now at each loop location, we're gonna go back and install a barrel connector. And this is a little electrician trick. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the end of that loop, we're gonna strip the wires, and we're gonna stick both of the positive wires into the positive side of the barrel connector and both of the negative wires into the negative. For this white wire, I'll be using the one with the black line to be the negative side and the one that's all white for the positive side. You need to strip about 3 sixteenths of an inch off the end of the barrel connector. You need to turn all the screws all the way out, put the wires in, and then tighten the screws down. Try to leave as little wire exposed as possible so they can't cross each other in short. And also look for any of those strands of hair wires hanging out because you don't want that because they could touch the other side and short out your display. So go down the row and convert all of your loops into jacks. So your roll of wire needs to go down to where the power will be entering your display. I have three books underneath the church, so I remove the books and put a small piece of wood on stilts underneath at the same height. So at the church, I put a female barrel connector on the end of the wire running to all of the village house locations. At this point, you should check that every LED connection is working. So now we have one wire that controls the lighting to all of the village houses. Now I'm going to install a second wire for all the accessories. I'm going to call this the full voltage wire. I'm going to install a dimmer to control the village houses. You cannot put a dimmer behind a dimmer, and you cannot put the power supplies I'm going to use on the accessories behind a dimmer. The second full voltage wire solves that. For the full voltage line, we're going to run a cable from one end of the display to the other again. Where the markers are for the full voltage fixtures, I'll be cutting the hole and pulling out the loop and putting a termination at each location. In this case, it's going to be for the street lights, my LED tree, and for my blinking light on my lighthouse at the end. So at this point, you might need a Y connector to connect a second power line. They're very simply made. You can use a couple barrel connectors and connect the positive to positive, negative to negative. If you need more connectors, I'd recommend a piece of terminal block because you can get more wires into the terminal block. A simple one is just a little chunk with two sections and a positive and negative, and you get three or four heads off the end of it. If you wanted to make something that was larger for a larger distribution, you can take uh, any length of terminal block. I usually mark it red and black for positive and negative so you don't get confused. You make some little loops of wire and you connect all the black posts together and all the red posts together. To get power in, you just need to put a lead with a female connector on and connect it somewhere, uh, the positive to the positive, negative to negative, and that'll give you power to the whole string. And then on the other side, you can put any variety of connectors you want. Plus, you can get more than one connector in the hole. So if you needed to really get a dent, uh, number of connections, you can do that. If you want to put a dimmer in front of your Y connector, then everything at the back end will be dim. If you want to put one of the end of each Y connector, then you can control the dim on each line. It runs like that. You'll have to figure out as you go along what kind of configuration you need. The village house line I have on this touch dimmer and the full power line I have on this manual switch. The technique I'm going to use to convert the accessories will require some LM2596 buck converters. Uh, you'll also need a multimeter and uh, to experiment with some soldering if you're not used to that. 
The two accessories I own are both controlled by two AA batteries, which means they're controlled by three volts. One of them had the external power supply option, which is a connector you can't even buy anymore, and the other one didn't have that option at all. And today, if you buy them, you can get them with and without, depending where you buy them. I don't know anything about your fixtures, so I'm going to show you how to connect to the battery connection. And we're going to set the voltage to act just like a battery. So whatever's going on inside electronics will act just the same. First, you're going to open your battery box. If the bottom plate is a solid plate, then the positive and negative are at the top. The one with the spring is the negative, and the one without the spring will be the positive. In this white fixture, the batteries went in the same way, so I had to use a meter connecting the negative on one side to the positive on the other to find out where the crossover was, and then the other two posts are the positive and negative. Again, the one with the spring is the negative, and the one without the spring is the positive. So you may want to mark those in some way. That is our entry point. We want to put the positive 3 volts at the entry point on that side and the negative 3 volts at the entry point on the other side. So the first thing you want to do is solder the input lead on your buck converter. So on the buck converter, you're going to see an in and an out. We're going to solder leads on the inside. I'm going to use a pre-made one. You could actually just solder two wires on and put one of your barrel connectors on. I recommend connecting all the wires from the electronic side and soldering it on the back side. So once you have your power lead set up, we want to plug it into the 12 volts. Now you need your multimeter and you're going to put that on the output side. Your voltage meter should be showing something above zero volts. Now you need to turn the screw on the blue voltage adjustment box counterclockwise until you get the output voltage down to three volts. That's the equivalent of two batteries. Now if you have three batteries, you want 4.5 volts. Okay, now you have to fit the board into your box and also decide what kind of wiring you want to use. To fit mine in the black box, I had to cut out this center divider between the two. To fit it into the white box, I had to trim down a little bit where the capacitors were. Underneath that little hump were some wires in the back, so you have to be very careful not to cut those. If you cut them, you need to put them back. So make sure if you open the back and check the wires, take a picture right away so you can put things back the way they were. So we're going to put the buck converter in and the electronics facing down. So drop it in there, see where you're hitting, uh, get that all cleaned up so you can drop it in freely. Next, you need to look at where you want your, out, your power supply to come out from the side. So all I did was drill a little hole next to the edge and put a little notch for the power supply to come out. I put the power supply connections on the switch side of the box so it would have extra slack to pull the, the board out of the box when I want to look at it. I used JST connectors to connect the board to the box. Now determine where you're going to connect the 3 volts out. You could wire it right to the battery terminal where you marked it for positive and negative. In my case, I opened it up and I soldered the JST connector to that same point on the inside where there's already a solder point for wire. Of course, then I had to figure out how to get the JST wire back into the battery compartment. For one, I ran it through the inside of the box. For the other one, I ran it outside and then back into the box. Both worked out just fine. You're going to have to uh, experiment and see which works best for you. Remember to try to connect the wire to the battery terminal. That way you're acting just like the battery. And when you provide that, and when you provide that battery voltage, everything inside should work. The board does extend over the contacts for the battery, so I put some electrical tape over the battery contact so it doesn't short out the board. Next you, can, next, you can insert the board and put the 12 volt power connector through the notch you made. So once you get everything hooked up, I do recommend that you test your output voltage again. Make sure it's still at the voltage you expect of 3 volts or 4.5. If it is, go ahead and uh, turn the power switch off, hook it up, and uh, go ahead and turn it on and see if your fixture turns on. The advantage of putting the buck converter in the battery compartment is each fixture is now independent and running at 12 volts. The other option was to install a single buck converter or buy a separate power supply and run the appropriate voltage to each unit. You can mimic battery connections with a big pen, some screws, and a couple terminals. The overall length needs to be 50 millimeters because that's the length of a normal battery. Once you have that, you can solder your wires onto those entry points and enter your, your voltage that way. I did run a test with this microscopic Mini 360 buck converter. I highly recommend that you don't use these. I think they ran way too hot to be putting in a display, so I recommend not using them and sticking with the LM2596. So we have a 12 volt daisy chain lead controlling all of our houses, and we have a full power lead controlling other accessories. So what are some of the cool things we can do? Well, the first thing for me is I decided that I wanted to put uh, a light in front of my nativity. So I found an old piece of uh, four millimeter light, which was warm white. Um, I could have used my eight millimeter, but it was a little large. And I uh, found a chunk of little angle iron. I painted it white. And then I went ahead and just hot glued it onto this piece of white, now white metal. And I set it in front of the nativity. I put a nice uh, long wire on it. I could have run this up to my full power line, but I decided that I wanted separate control of it. So I ran it back to the power center under the church. And there I put it on a dimmer.
So now that everything's running off 12 volts, what about color and control? One issue with color is you have to deal with all the different connectors and how you're going to get from one spot to another. In some ways, it'd almost be easier to put a controller in front of each house and hook it up to your phone and control each house individually. It would cost you a little more, but the quantity of extra color wiring you'd have to do would be less. The good news is everything being at 12 volts DC gives you that option to try those things. I've added some color around the edges of the church under the snow to give it a little glow. The pictures make it look brighter than it really is. I'm also looking at what it'll take to add some porch and accent lighting. I do have some associated videos. I have one specifically on one color dimmers, and in there I cover a lot of the dimmers that you saw in this video and how they behave. I hope you enjoyed this video and leave any comments you may have below.